Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Fenway Park in Boston. Will this be the final game? We'll know in about two hours and a half. There was a report that it was raining in New York, but that proves to be erroneous. They say now the sun is shining, and Rick Waits and Catfish Hunter are ready to go at it down there. With Ned Martin, this is Jim Wood. Another good, good crowd on this, the final day of the regular season. The Red Sox must win. The Yankees must lose for the season to go anymore. No sense repeating that. Boston fans have known that for the last week as this ball club has just played great baseball, continuing to win, 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 but so have the other people in the pinstripes. Today, the issue goes right to Louis Tian. He has never been beaten by the Blue Jays. His record is 12-8. and eight. He's 2-0 and oh lifetime against them. And the tall, talented Don Kirkwood with a 4-4 four and four record and 0-2 oh and two lifetime against Boston will pitch today in the final game for Roy Hartsdale. He's just been informed that the first manager has gone down the chute. Billy Hunter fired a few moments ago as manager of the Texas Rangers and not even there today. Pat Corrales is running the ball club and Billy Hunter has said bye-bye to Brad Corbett. We'll be back with that and other things in just a moment. Angle Tire has Kelly Springfield Supercharger 60. It's a wide, wide tire with a full 8-inch tread giving road-grabbing traction. A sleek Series 60 profile gives you that get-up-and-go look. It's tough with twin glass belt construction for impact, resistance, and mileage. It's Kelly's wide, low, tough passenger tire, the high-performance Supercharger 60, now at Angle Tire. See the good and tough Kelly Supercharger 60 now at Angle Tire Company, 116 Broadway, Providence. We're good and tough. We're the Kelly. Hello, I'm Tom Bosley. The personal professionals of physical therapy are helping people overcome the disabling effects of stroke and heart attack. They want you to know that high blood pressure may be the forerunner of heart attack and stroke. The members of the American Physical Therapy Association urge you to have your blood pressure checked regularly and follow your doctor's advice carefully. Remember, there's no such thing as a stroke of luck. changes today as he endeavors to drive the final nail into the Red Sox coffin if there is to be one. He leads off with his regular center fielder, Rick Bosetti. Bob Baylor will be in right. Roy Howell at third. John Mayberry, first base. Otto Velez goes to left field. Willie Upshaw is the hitter. Dave McKay, second base. Rick Sorone catching today. Luis Gomez is the shortstop. And Don Kirkwood, the pitcher. For Boston, Rick Burleson at short. Jerry Remy at second. Jim Rice in right. Carl Yastrzemski in left. Carlton Fisk catching. Fred Lynn in center. Butch Hobson, the hitter. George Scott, first base. Jack Brohammer will be at third, and Louis Tiant, the pitcher. Jim McKean is the plate umpire today with Greg Kosk at first base, Jerry Newdecker at second, and George Maloney to call the plays at third. Let's pause here for station identification on the Boston Red Sox radio network. Push the button for music and personality. 920 Radio. Between the noise, the news, and the snooze. WJAR Providence. Right now, it's time to announce our final Getty unleaded regular player for this, the final week. No stats, no nothing. Just for getting the lead out and being a regular guy all year long and doing a job that you can't even find words to talk about. 
we present the last Getty Award to Carlton Pudge Fisk. For his efforts throughout the year, Pudge received Getty gift certificates good toward the purchase of Getty Unleaded Regular. The gasoline with the octane performance of regular and the clean running smoothness of unleaded. And most important, the gasoline that sells for less than most other major unleaded. Getty, unleaded regular, and Getty Premium. They've got what's best for your car. Now here's Ned with the Butterfinger Award. Well, we voted on that last week, and it is the, the nth degree award of the whole year. The uh, fielding star of the, of the Boston Red Sox, uh, who will apparently present not only getting the uh, Butterfingers, camp box of Butterfingers candy, the case of them, but a very nice trophy. And it'll go to the peerless right fielder, Dwight Evans, who showed throughout the year while he was out there that you just didn't run on him, you don't do anything on him, and nothing is ever safe when he's hit out toward right field. He's going to gobble it up for excellent fielding, and he showed how badly he was hurt when he was dizzied by the beating when he could, when he dropped two fly balls, and he hasn't dropped a fly ball in a century. So for the Butterfinger Award for the year, it goes to Dewey Evans. Excellent choice. And the uh, Champion Award? Oh, yeah, the Champion Award is something that uh, I think both of us would have to just you know, we, we didn't talk about it too much, uh, about individual games or anything else, but I think for the past month, the guy besides Jim Rice, who has held the club together just by inspiration alone, by playing, by wanting so badly to have this pennant and this World Series, that it just has to go the champion of the month for September to number eight. Unless you actually knew it to be a fact. He just came into this world cold and dropped into Fenway Park. How could you ever believe that Carl Yastrzemski is 39 years old? Playing like 25 and still playing, and so he, I think, deserves the, the month, monthly award, and uh, I hope he has many, many more months and many, many more years here. Gee, I do, too. Umpires are out. Hartsfield and Zimmer are out. And the only game of any consequence now, Cleveland and New York waits against Hunter. Baltimore will be in Detroit, Minnesota at Kansas City, Chicago at California, Milwaukee at Oakland, Texas and Seattle. The Philadelphia-Pittsburgh game now means nothing, and the good friends of the Steel City can start worrying about the Steelers. New York will be at Chicago, Montreal at St. Louis. Atlanta. I've got both Montreal and Atlanta and St. Louis. That's going to be a pretty good trick. <laughs> San Francisco will be in Houston, and the Dodgers are getting now prime for the Phillies play the San Diego Club in San Diego. Then I guess it was inevitable that uh, Hunter had to go. Corbett unleashed his bankroll and thought he had bought a division championship down there and as usual somebody has to take the blame and it fell on the head of a, to me, a very fine guy and a very astute baseball man, Billy Hunter. Very astute is right. Uh, he was quoted erroneously early in the year by some writer saying, if I can't win the pennant with this club, I should be fired. I asked him about that about halfway through the season. He said, I didn't say that. He said, I should win with this ball club. But he said, I, I said nothing about being fired. I'm too, a little too smart for that. So ironically, he is fired and becomes the first manager to go by the boards. But I, I know this baseball, uh, the world of baseball will pick up a Billy Hunter somewhere very soon. Sure will. I think the whole Texas thing was summed up pretty good about midway through the year. Either one of us was either talking to Brett or somebody on the Kansas City Club, and he made the statement at that time, I think Texas has got the best club in the American League West. But they don't play very well together, and never have. And I guess it all sums up to just that. Yeah, team play in baseball can be an important part, even though it's an individual game. The groundswell of applause is starting as the portly figure of Senor Louis Tiant strolls in from the bullpen with pitching coach Al Jackson. These were the days early in the 70s, Jim, and then when you came later, you saw them too, and every time Tiant came in to pitch this way, why, the big roar would start, because they, any time you needed a game pitched, you handed him the ball. He's a wonder, too. I tell him about something happened earlier, about 12.30 here. Alan Ashby went out and got some numbers. The only game on the scoreboard out there now, the auxiliary scoreboard in left field, they've taken all the numbers down because it's been a tradition here with kids, I guess, to run out there after the final game and steal them. So they've only got Cleveland, New York up there, and Ashby put up at the end of two innings, Cleveland eight, New York nothing. 
and a lot of people at this dam were going wild and screaming and hollering and everything else. I was walking in from doing the interview with Fred Kendall, and I heard this huge roar, and I looked at... No, nothing was up on the screen, and then I looked over there and saw after two innings, Cleveland eight and New York nothing. And then later on, Brohammer said it was Ashby who had done it. Well, of course, it Ashby, the former Cleveland catcher. Yeah. Here come the Red Sox. <laughs> Brohammer, Burleson, Remy, and Scott, third to first. Yastrzemski, Lynn, right, left to right. Carlton Fifth behind the plate. And moving out of the dugout now, El Tiante and getting a standing ovation. He and Fisk both as they take their places. The whole ballpark is up. Well, it's in tribute to the, the team which came back and still has a chance. Now, now ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Kiley will play the national anthem of Canada of the United States of America. Fenway in just a moment. Mamacello's Kitchen, full of all the spicy aromas of sauces, meats, cheeses, and pastas, just like the memories of your own mom's kitchen. And now, Gino, Jimmy, and Frankie are moving their ever-so-popular Mamacello's closer to you, leaving East Greenwich and expanding to a bigger and better Mamacello's restaurant in West Warwick. Now, thanks to Gino, Jimmy, and Frankie, the finest Italian cuisine and music is closer than ever. The new Mama Cellos, one half mile south of the Warwick Music Tent, open every day for lunch and dinner. At Kinetti's Trailer Sales, we offer super service as well as super prices, and we'll guarantee anything we do. So anytime you need service or repairs on a mini home, motor home, truck camper, tent camper, or travel camper, remember, Kinetti's is the one place to go in New England for service on any kind of recreational vehicle. A gray, overcast day at Fenway Park. The lights have already been turned on. So Crowley has made the announcement that if there is a playoff game tomorrow, if the Yankees lose and the Red Sox win, tickets will go on sale immediately after this ball game. So I guess all has been said that can be said, and for the final time this year anyway, here's Ed Martin. All right, Jim, thank you, and good evening, ap afternoon, morning, whatever it is. It's on a Sunday, October the 1st, and this is a big day, I, I recall, Jim, in this... Uh, in 
a brief history with, uh, well, a long history with this ball club that I have been. Uh, October 1st, 1967, the Red Sox won the pennant here when Jim Lonborg beat the Minnesota Twins. October 1st, 1961, I was on the air for in my rookie year when Roger Maris hit the home run to make it 61. In 26 years, I don't think I've ever gone down to the last day. Uh, 1956, next to last day, Yankees at Fenway in a night game. But this was as close as I've ever been. Well, it's here again. Second time that I've had it for the Red Sox, on the final day anyway. It came back up to the next to the last day last year before it was all settled. But it was settled, and the Red Sox were down by two and a half games, and the final game was rained out with Baltimore. We had the Rick Dempsey show. Rick Bassetti is up, center fielder. And winding and making the first pitch of the game is Louis Tiant. The curve is over, called strike one. We're underway. Bassetti is hitting 261. Five home runs, 42 runs batted in. Wind up by Tiant. Spins and throws, and there's a drive to right center field. Coming on, Lynn, and he's got it on a nice hummer salting catch. Freddie Lynn. A ball had hung up enough so that Lynn, with a good jump, got over to it, made a dive for it, caught it in midair, and took a complete somersault holding on to the baseball, and that sets the stage for this game. They're playing it again in the center field uh, screen camera. And there's the tumble and the cheer. So Bassetti is victimized by Lynn. Fred Lynn playing great ball this past two or three weeks. The batter is Bob Baylor, and he takes outside a ball. He's the right fielder hitting 266. One home run, 52 runs batted in. The 1 0 delivery by Tiant. Ground ball, left side, taken by Brohammer, going to his left. Throws him out. Nice play by Bro. That ball was headed, uh, could have headed toward left field. Brohammer got a good jump on it. And we said yesterday, people have not said much about it, but since he has taken over at third, Brohammer has done a very steady and ex- more than acceptable job. And they made the change of putting uh, Hobson as a designated hitter and Jim Rice in right field. Brohammer has held forth very well at third. Roy Howell is up. Howell hitting 271. Eight home runs, 61 runs batted in. Left-handed hitter and a good hitter. Had a home run yesterday. Louis' fastball is up high, ball one. It's gray here, and as Jim said, the lights have been on. Wind up and the 1-0 pitch. Howell bangs one down the right field line, curving foul into the crowd. Well pulled ball, but pulled too well by Roy. A ball and a strike. I don't know if somebody has a radio over there. Cleveland must be ahead of the Yankees or something. Listening to the... uh, New York Station. A lot of cheering down the right field line and down the left field line. Indians may have scored off Catfish. Third ball dropped over, but low. Ball three. Andy Thornton hit a home run, and it's 2 nothing Cleveland in the first inning. Three balls, one strike pitch. It's a strike call to Howell. Three and two. Well, Catfish has given up one of his early home runs. He gave, gave one up one time to Rick Bassetti of this ball club recently. Louis pitching three and two to Howell. Foul back. Count three and two. So it starts early, and the drama will continue to unfold throughout the rest of this afternoon. Deont shakes his head. Comes around with the arm. Comes in with a pitch. Fly ball, left center field. Yasemski coming in. Burleson back. Yaz says, I've got it. He takes it. And that's all for Toronto. After a half inning, no score. 
Here is special shopping news from Zare. Starting Monday morning, every Zare store in Rhode Island and Massachusetts will begin their big dollar spree sale. Hundreds of special low prices all over the store. Dollar saving specials at Zare on fashion housewares, health and beauty aids, and everything you need to get your car in shape for the cold weather ahead. Yes, specials in every department, all at super low prices at the dollar spree sale at Zare. Watch for the colorful dollar spree circular page after page of terrific buys. A huge inventory of all the latest looks for you, your family, and your home at the Dollar Spree Sale at Zare. See how far your dollar can go with the Dollar Spree Sale at Zare. Famous Zare quality and value at super special Dollar Spree prices. Remember, you can charge everything. Don't miss the Dollar Spree Sale starting Monday morning, a super dollar saving time. Take another look at Zare. <laughs> Colonial Sports Shorts with Jim Wright. Jimmy, you played in all the stadiums now in the American League. What kind of feeling do you get playing at Fenway Park? Hawk playing at Fenway is what baseball is all about. Like a dream come true. The fans are very close to the field. They're really part of the game. I right like the great tasting Colonial Fenway Franks. They sell at Fenway. With the taste that takes you out to the ball game. You catch on fast, Hawk. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. You know I do what I can. Did you ever think about being an announcer? <laughs> Well, a lot of people here today, it's not a, a bang-out crowd by any means, but a lot of people, and they're going to be loud all afternoon if scores like that keep coming in. Among the folks here today are the Massachusetts Elks Association, entertaining 300 hospitalized veterans today at this game. The veterans are in Section 10. <laughs> Right-hander Don Kirkwood is out on the mound. He has won four and lost four. It's pitched one good game and a losing cause when Eckersley beat him earlier in the season, 2-1. to one. And they hammered him last time out. They knocked him out early up in Toronto. That was in the 14-inning game, but he wasn't around to see the end of that. He lasted only two and two-thirds innings, gave up three runs and seven hits. Right-hander working to Rick Burleson. Burleson hitting 248, grounded a third. Howell up with it. Over to first, one out. Roy Howell playing third base. Luis Gomez at short. Dave McKay at second. And John Mayberry at first. Otto Velez in left field. Rick Bosetti in center. Bob Baylor in right. Rick Cerrone the catcher. And right-hander Don Kirkwood on the mound. Here is Scoot, Jerry Remy, hitting 275 with two homers and 43 RBIs. Kirkwood winds and throws. A bunt toward the mound, picked up by Kirkwood, and throws Remy out. It was too close to the mound. He did not pull it but enough to get it past Kirkwood. And now here's Jim Wright. And they're getting up all over the place for him, too. Big standing O for three-quarters of the crowd here for the man who many feel is going to be this year's most valuable player in the American League. Feels that he should get it. The curveball is over, called strike one. Rice is hitting 314, five, or 45 home runs, 137 runs batted in. The one-strike pitch fouled off, strike two, slider. Nothing, nothing ball game. Bottom of the first inning. Yankees batting in the bottom of the first at New York and Cleveland leads two to nothing. Kirkwood wants another sign. Comes in with his pitch sidearm outside. One ball, two strikes. Now the one-two pitch. Fastball, foul back to the screen. Count hangs, one and two. Kirkwood came over to this ball club in the first week of the season from Chicago. They wanted him as a reliever, but he got to be a starter after April. Actually, in mid-June when he became that starter. Had an arm problem. Strikes Rice out with a slider, and it's one, two, three in the first inning. The end of one, no score. 
your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, announces the battle of the year with our competition. Car Wars. A fight to the finish in car value that's going to make you the winner. Especially with the year-end values on Plymouth Polari. One of the most popular Plymouths ever. With a coupe that's got the goods on the competition. From the sporty, open feeling of the optional T-bar roof to the racy, available roadrunner treatment. A compact sedan that doesn't give up room, ride, or comfort. And a wagon that's been America's biggest seller over the past two years. Yes, in the battle for your car dollar at cleanup time, nobody's got a lineup of winners like your Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Who'll make you a winner, too, during Car Wars. See your New England Chrysler Plymouth dealers during Car Wars. Boy, this game's terrific. It sure is. Be sure to tell me what I missed. Miss? Where are you going? You know. Oh, there. Yeah, there. To get a bag of Baby Ruth fun size candy bars. Now? Oh, sure. All that fudge and chewy caramel. Well, now I've heard everything. No, you haven't. There's also lots of peanuts and a sweet chocolatey cover. Granted, Baby Ruth's are terrific tasting. But can't you wait until after the game? Well, maybe I could call time. What? So you can get a bag of Baby Ruth fun size candy bars? When you got to have one, you got to have one. Toronto Blue Jays up in the second inning against Louis Piat. John Mayberry, the big first baseman and cleanup hitter, batting 250, 22 home runs, and 70 runs batted in. No score in this one, top of the second inning. Now the pitch by Tiant, and it's a strike call on the outside corner. Nothing in one to John Mayberry. Here's the wind and the pitch. Ground ball, right side. Scott takes it easy. Runs to the bag. Mayberry's out. Tried to pull the outside pitch. There's one away. Otto Velez is up. He's hitting 269 with nine home runs and 38 runs batted in. Well, what may be a rather woozy Philadelphia ball club playing at Pittsburgh today in a game that now doesn't mean anything. The Jim Cott going against Wendell uh, Jones. Odell Jones, rather. Cott is 8-5. and five. Ground ball to short by Velez. Scooped up by Burleson. Fires across, and they're two down. So far, the pitchers have held sway here. The Red Sox pitching staff has had a phenomenal week. They have been, been giving absolutely nothing to anybody, Detroit or Toronto. They have given up uh, something like three earned runs. Now, only three runs, all of them earned in the last 52 innings. Back to the last of the eighth in Toronto last Sunday. And that is some pitching. Willie Upshaw, designated hitter, is up, batting 240. One home run, 17 runs batted in. And the delivery, check swing, tapper. Tiant will field it barehanded, throws first. He's got him. Hard throw by Louis. One, two, three, inning again. And we go to the bottom of the second, no score. They came from across the sea, from Japan, Germany, England, Italy, bright and eager to show what they could do. They were foreigners in a foreign land. But one thing that was true in the old country was also true in the new. You can't buy a better club for any kind of car than Champion. You can't buy a better club no matter where you are than Champion. Champion, number one in the world. Number one in your car. Imports from every country find America is the land of opportunity. The opportunity to use Champion, the world's best-selling spark plug. The plug that wins more big races. For imports, you can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't buy a better plug than Champion. You can't... If your car has trouble starting, it's trying to tell you something, like maybe it needs a tune-up. Armory Auto Supply Company reminds you to make sure that you or your mechanic use only the best parts, and that includes Champion Spark Plugs. Remember, the fresher your plugs, the surer your start. 
This message has been brought to you by Armory Auto Supply Company, 1850 Broad Street, Cranston. Armory Auto Supply, a distributor of champion spark plugs and other fine parts for your car. Carl Yastrzemski first up, and the news on the board now as Yankees 2 and Cleveland 2, as the New Yorkers have tied it up. Cleveland broke early with a two-run homer by Andy Thornton, but the Yankees, scrapping and clawing, have tied it up. It's 2-2 after one at New York. Carl Yastrzemski is up. He has hitting 278, 16 home runs, 79 runs batted in. The curve by Kirkwood is inside corner called strike one. Kirkwood, so far, in the first three batters he's faced anyway, has thrown a lot of breaking stuff. Change up, hit on the ground, second base way. McKay backhands it, throws to first, and Yastrzemski's out. One away. Number 27. Carlton Fisk coming up. Fisk hitting 285, 20 home runs, and 88 runs batted in. Nothing, nothing here. It's 2-2 in New York. Freddie Lynn on deck. Kirkwood waiting for Fisk to get set. It was a very quiet Carlton Fisk who was standing by the batting cage today. Very little horseplay or anything. You guys just uh, are all there and they know what the score is. Some of them talkative, others very quiet. Pitch is outside and low, a ball. Yastrzemski just sat in front of his locker for quite a while, looking down and... Here's the pitch. It's outside, a ball. Well, Cleveland must be doing something else. There's some transistors down there with... A Yankee game on, I imagine. That may be a wild one down there before they're through. 2-0. High to Fisk. Ball three. Three and nothing. Of course, the Red Sox have to win here. You can't spend all your time looking at the board. You Red Sox have to win. Of course, the Red Sox think they can win. The Yankees think they can win. So, it's just the way it is. They... <laughs> Neither team has any thought of losing. There's a strike called. Three balls, one strike. Three and one to Carlton Fisk with one out in the Red Sox second inning. Kirkwood fires. Chopping foul at the plate by Pudge. The count is three and two. Three balls, two strikes, one out. count. Wind up and pitch. Strike three called and a good curveball broken over there by Kirkwood. His second strikeout. He's got the deuce running well today. <laughs> Gary Alexander hit a home run for Cleveland. The Indians lead the Yankees three to two in the second inning. That has just flashed on the big board in center. Gary Alexander a home run off Catfish Hunter. And he's given the big long ball today. Pitch to Lynn is outside a ball. Freddie hitting an even 300. And trying to finish the season over 300. He has hit in nine straight games. Pitch is inside to him, ball two. So the beat goes on at Fenway and New York, and it's got a long way to go. Kirkwood nods okay to the sign and delivers. Strike called at the knees. Two balls, one strike. Lynn backs out a moment. Don't back out of your business or your association with advertising. Use the yellow pages of your telephone directory. 
Fly ball, right field, but not deep enough. Bob Baylor is there, and Baylor puts it away for the out. That's all for the Red Sox. After an inning and a half, or after two innings of play, it's nothing, nothing. Hey! We're in the yellow. We're in the yellow pages. Yeah, we're in the book. It's the first place people look. We're in the yellow. In the yellow pages. Because it's great to run your business in the yellow. In real estate, you've got to make known your ability to handle the needs of buyers and sellers. We expect the Yellow Pages to do that. We're in the Yellow, in the Yellow Pages, because it's great to run your business in the Yellow. I'm Dick Kilroy of the Beecher Real Estate Agency in Portland, Maine. We're so pleased with our Yellow Pages ad, we copied it for our calling cards. We're really in the Yellow. We're in the Yellow, in the Yellow Pages. Crowland Handling Equipment Company, East Providence, is the supplier of lift trucks and industrial truck accessories. Crowland product line contains engineered conveyors, complete dock equipment, drum handling equipment, hand trucks, containers, maintenance platforms, pallet racks, shelving, wire petitions, trailer jacks, and wheel chocks, too. Crowland Handling Equipment Company, 12 Commercial Way, East Providence. Crowland Handling Equipment Company, the single source for material handling products and parts. Cleveland leads the Yankees 4-2. to two. They're still batting, and Tidrow is on for the Yankees. Jim? What a wild, wild day this is going to be. Tidrow has replaced the great catfish hunter in early exit today. Here's McKay up. 240, seven home runs, 45 batted in. Cleveland's still batting. There's a pitch by Tiant missing the outside corner for a ball, and it's 1-0. and oh. Straight away in the outfield, the flag going gently out over the left field wall. Blowing into the motion. Shows him the numbers and flips it in high. And Tiant behind. One of the few times today, two balls, no strikes. McKay, Rick Cerrone, and Gomez. Cerrone got a big hit last Sunday of Bob Stanley. It looked like it was going to be the burial blow. A little roller dumped along first. Scott comes charging right at the bag. Steps on it. One out. Let's pause there for station identification on the Boston Red Sox radio network. Hear the Boston Red Sox every game, home and away, on your station for sports. 920 WJR Providence. Another well, roller goes up as they put on the message board that Chidrow is on for the Yankees. Here is Cerrone up now at 226 for three home runs and 20 batted in. Slam, bang in New York today, right off the bat. But here we're looking for our first base runner, both clubs. Kirkwood and Tion in a bang-up duel here in the early inning. Cerrone shortened up as if to bunt with Bohammer deep and did not offer us a pitch at the ball. One and all the count. One uh, ball, no strikes on Rick Cerrone with Gomez to follow. Louis' next pitch, soft curveball. Could almost see the stitches on that one as it broke over the outside corner. One and one to count. Typical uh, Tiant bamboozling delivery. Now Louis fires one one and a swing and a miss. Uh, Cerrone looked like he wanted to go to right field all the way with that. One and two to count. No score, third inning. Indians are leading New York 4-2 in the second inning. The one-two pitch now by El Tiani. The head take and a ball had just missed outside. Two balls, two strikes. Well, he gave Saron a little bit of everything that time. Not really the big head motion, just a little quick turn of the neck. Working now, 2-2. Two -two. Again, the head fake, and he stuck him out. Cerrone goes down swinging. It's two away. Big board says Indians lead 4-2, top of the second, and still batting. That's what the roar is all about here. First strikeout for Tiant. 
Luis Gomez comes up. Big balloons floating down onto the field now. Like a carnival atmosphere here today. Fastball for a strike. Nothing in one. Nothing but zeros up there. Red Sox have not had a base runner. The Jays have not had a base runner. Pitch to Gomez. Driven out toward left center field. Lynn on the move. Closes into the gap. He's got it. We go to the bottom of the third. No score. Clemson Travel is bringing the greatest ship in the world, the QE2, to Boston for one super cruise that will visit seven enchanting ports in the warm and sunny Caribbean. This 12-day luxury vacation, visit for St. Martin, Martinique, Barbados, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Tortola, and St. Thomas. The QE2 offers more than any other ship afloat. Longer than three football fields, 13 stories high, the QE2 has four swimming pools, eight bars, Four great restaurants, a movie theater, a big casino, top-notch entertainment, and lots more. And you'll feast like a king and the queen as well. You can eat six meals a day from breakfast in bed to a midnight buffet. And complimentary wine is served with dinner every night. There's always something going on for those who want activity. Or, if you prefer, just rest and relax and get away from the everyday routine. It'll be getting cold and dreary in December, and the QE2 is just the thing to get you ready for a long New England winter. So plan now to cruise on the QE2 December 3rd from Boston. Call Crimson Travel at 742-8500. The QE2 is a British registry. In the legal profession, the bang of the gavel and the call case closed is the signal for the end of a great day. And it's a comfort to know that your private office can look its professional best with what E.L. Freeman Company has to offer in desks. Comfortable chairs for you, your secretary, and clients. In quality pens, desk sets, and stationery. In lamps, and yes, even attache cases for each successful case. No wonder it's a yell, as in every lawyer loves Freeman Company. In Providence, Pawtucket, East Providence, Woonsocket, Newport, and Wakefield. Here we go with the final home run inning of the year. This is the last one. Brought to you by your New England Chrysler from a dealer. If anybody hits a home run in this inning... They will win a 1978 Valari from your New England Chrysler from a dealer. And if a second home run is hit, that contestant wins a December 3rd cruise for two on the fabulous QE2 compliments of Crimson Travel. Nine cars and one cruise have gone out to the good fans of New England this year. And here is Butch Hobson trying to win one last Valari for Charles Dabrowski of Salem, New Hampshire. It's a ground ball hit the third. Smothered by Howe. Fired the first. He is out on a good bang-bang play by Howe. Butch went sliding in the first to try to beat the throw, but it was not to be. And there's one away. And here's the boomer now. He'll try to park a Valari into the garage of Harold Leonard of Fitchburg, Massachusetts. Harold Leonard of Fitchburg. All names read during the home run inning receive a free case of Coca-Cola. Scott looks at a strike right down the middle. Nothing, nothing here. Bottom of the third. Breaking ball up high from the tall Mr. Kirkwood. One ball, one strike. Outfield a little bit around to the left. Bowhammer on deck. Getting darker here now. There's a wild pitch sailing all the way back to the screen. And the boomer up there trying to win a Plymouth Valari for Harold Leonard of Fitchburg. Watches it almost hit the screen on the fly. Into the bottom of the second inning. The Indians lead the Yankees 6-2. to two. Scott takes inside. Three balls and a strike. The Yankees are batting in the second. Trailing the Indians 6-2. Scott swings and he misses strike two. Full count now on the boomer. Wild, wild day, man. Just as Kirkwood is ready to pitch, Scott steps out. So we'll have a full count pitch coming up here in just a moment. Not a base runner for either club yet. And that said a while ago. All right, to ensure the Cleveland lead, but the Red Sox must win here. Here's the 3 2 pitch to Scott. And did he save it? He did. Ball four. Scott gets the walk, and he's the first base runner of the ball game. And up comes Jack Brohammer. 
batting for Henry Betzold of Hatfield, Massachusetts. Henry Betzold of Hatfield, Massachusetts. The Red Sox have a base runner. Score has just gone up on the message board. Glenn Hardway is right in the booth with us, attuned to the Yankee game. And it'll keep us right up to date on practically every pitch, every base runner. So we can get it along to you as fast as we can. Hang in there, Glenn. Wide breaking ball outside. One ball, no strike. Now time is called by the first base umpire. And a new ball requested by Kirkwood. Scott at first and one out. No score here in the bottom of the third. The catfish clobbered today. Time's still out. Now it's back in again. One on, one out. And Brohammer trying to win a Valeri for Henry Betzold of Hatfield, Massachusetts. Kirkwood backs off the rubber. Brohammer backs out of the batter's box. We haven't had a pitch for a while. The delivery is down a little bit low. Two balls, no strikes on Brohammer. Wide of the line at third, and about a step off the grass. Playing blow in just a little bit. Kirkwood getting ready. High and wide, ball three. Three balls, no strikes on Brohammer. He walked Scott on a 3-2 pitch, and now he has gone 3-0 and on Brohammer with the top of the batting order due up next. Probably the same scene existing at Yankee Stadium with this game being flashed batter by batter down there. Ball four, Brohammer walks. Two walks given up now by Kirkwood. And up comes Rick Burleson. The home run inning rolls along and Burleson will be batting for Charles Parsons of Presque Isle, Maine. Charles B. Parsons, Presque Isle, Maine. Two on, only one out. The first scoring throw of the day. Burleson grounded out to third his first time up. Long look in by Kirkwood. Both study in a little bit in center, and Baylor way in and right. Breaking ball in and over to the rooster for a strike. Nothing in one. At the end of two complete innings, Cleveland six, Yankees two, Indians now batting in the third. There's a little soft fly ball out into center field. Bosetti coming on, coming on. Can't get it. Falls for a base hit. Here's the throw to third. They've got Scott forced out. Good play by Bosetti. Couldn't get to it. He laid off, picked it up on the first hop. Scott was handcuffed. He couldn't do anything. So he got the late break for third, thinking the ball might be caught, and a perfect strike from Bosetti to Howell cuts him down. Brohammer moves into second, and Burles is on it. The fielder's choice all the way. 8-5 on the putout. Now Jerry Remy's up, and he will bat for Patrick Dempsey of Nangatuck, Connecticut. Patrick Dempsey. Two on, two out. No score here in this, the final home run inning of the year. Charging at the peak of the cap is Kirkwood. Here's the stretch. The big right-hander brings in a breaking ball with the knees for a call strike. Nothing and one. Brohammer off second. Burleson off first. Outfield as straight away as it can be. Here's a pitch. Whack down to the right side. McKay is up. Goes to second for the force out there. I don't think McKay remembered there were two outs. So we bring to a close the final home run inning of the year. And congratulations. To everybody that won a spanking new Plymouth Valari and the one person that won the cruise on the QE2. The end of three, no score. If your business suffers from lack of communication, think about mobile radios.
Contact Radio of Providence operates a system that gives you a mobile radio system at only a fraction of the cost of putting in your own transmitter. You'll be able to keep in touch with your trucks, car, or office. Call Contact Radio. That's Contact Radio, 1055 Westminster Street, Providence. Kelly's, Kelly's, Kelly's. Sporting goods better. Visit Kelly's Sporting Goods today or tonight in Garden City, Cranston. Open 9.30 till 9.30, Monday through Friday, Saturday till 9. Every store's here. Kelly's, Kelly's, Kelly's. From fishing tackle to surfboards. Lower prices for all you sports. Kelly's got the goods and sports you need. Kelly's, Kelly's, Kelly's. Lower prices for all you sports. Kelly's got the goods and sports. What do you like? Cheese. Yeah, That's what you get. Yeah. yeah. We're going to Papa Gino's, right? Right. So we'll all have to get pizza, right? Wrong. What you like is what you get. But what if I want a hamburger? That's, That's what you get. get. Or a hot dog and a Coke? That's, That's what, what you get. get. And what if I want a big hot pizza pie with green peppers and onions and sausage and mushrooms? That's what you get. What you like is what you get. Papa Gino's. Papa this program is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Boston Red Sox, Mariner Communications, WITS, solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Red Sox is prohibited. A little brighter here now. And uh, Lynn had to go back and get some sunglasses and take some out to Yastrzemski. And we've had a slight hold up. And Rick Bosetti rolls around again. He was victimized on the fine, tumbling, rolling catch by Freddie Lynn in the first inning. Keon has retired nine men in a row. Louie looks in. Wind has all but died down all over now. And we settle down to this grinder into the fourth inning with no score. And Keon is outside. One ball and no strikes. Waiting is Mr. Bosetti. Tiant brings it in and a good curveball right on the corner for a strike. One and one. Tiant for the money. There has not been a hit in this game yet. A couple of walks and that's been it. Tiant's one one delivery to Bosetti. He ran up on the ball to butt at it and it catches the inside corner for a strike. One and two the count. Well, starting in a mild argument now with Jim McKean, the plate umpire. Very funny kind of a day. Now a big, one of those crazy baseballs falls out of the bleachers, and Lynn has to go get that, and we'll give it to Bill Lee in the bullpen to amuse himself with. One ball, two strikes. Nothing, nothing, fourth inning. Tiant standing out there in bright sunshine right now with some big, funny-looking clouds overhead, too. Head fake and a swing and a miss, strike three. Tiant gets his second strikeout. He gave him the book. He read him the literature on that one. Here's Baylor up now, bounced out to Brohammer, who made a good play in the first inning on him. At the end of two and one-half innings, no change. Indians six, Yankees two. Yankees batting now in the bottom of the third. Fastball poured over at the letters of Baylor for a strike. One out, nobody on. Ten in a row, retired by Mr. Tiant. Just outside of the good moving pitch, and the count is even at a ball and a strike. First, the turn and a foul going back and just over the sky views. Tiana again has the edge. He has worked continually ahead of the Toronto hitters this afternoon. One ball, two strikes on Baylor. Roy Howell, who hit a tremendous home run here yesterday, is on deck. One two pitch by Louis, straight over the top and a bunt down toward third, picked up by Brohammer and fired on the first. In time, he got him. 
Good play by Brohammer as the ball almost ran up his arm on the charge. He did not get much of a steam into his throw, but the long stretch by George Scott made the difference. And Baylor kicks a little bit on the call. Two men out, here's how. Well, when the winds blow and the snows come, why don't you come on down this winter to Disney World in beautiful Orlando? Come with Crimson Travel. They have the best of everything. Crimson Travel, 742-8500. Two outs, nobody on. Eleven in a row retired by Tiant, and he's had some fine fielding plays. There goes a base hit lined out in the left center field. Going over quickly to cut it off and hold it to a long single is Carl Yosemite. So the first base runner off Lloyd. No chance for Yaz or Lynn. And up comes John Mayberry. Grounded to Scott his first time up. That breaks the string for Louis at 11 straight retirements. And the first tip of the afternoon for either ball club. In case you tuned in late, Billy Hunter was fired about two hours ago by Brad Corbett, the owner of the Texas Rangers. Hunter out in Texas. Lloyd over the top on a fastball, tails out away from Big John. One ball and no strikes. Briggs just made a whale of a play to Rob Munson of an extra base hit, and there's one out in the Yankee third inning. Fastball on the corner, one ball, one strike. I'm glad you're right, Plain Grim. Two men out now for the Yankees in the third. Nobody on. Indians leading 6-2. Howell with a short lead at first base and the pitch to Mayberry. Again, it's outside. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> Tian. Pitching in most delivered fashion. First time he's had to work today, of course, with anybody on. Comes slowly down to the waist. Fires and a high pop-up left side. Back goes Brohammer. On comes Burleson. And Brohammer puts it away on the grass. We go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Nothing, nothing. Hey! Summer sunshine. Here comes those great summer weekends. You roll back the clouds and roll out the good light. Good friends and good food. The burgers and hot dogs, fish kebab, barbecue, chicken and ribs. Hey, all that great food that just naturally goes with the great summer weekends. Hey, and you pull out the ice cold Coca-Cola too. The great refreshment that just naturally goes with summer food. It adds life to all the good taste under the sun. Now, are you sure you've got enough Coke on ice this weekend? T.H. Bayless Company is your industrial supplier of high-grade industrial chemicals from reputable firms. T.H. Bayless Company of Wallach services your company efficiently and completely. Basic industrial chemicals for casting metals and for metal finishing are supplied by quick, efficient delivery. Also, T.H. Bayless Company offers laboratory analysis service and complete turnkey installation. T.H. Bayless Company, the best chemical supply service for plating chemicals and casting metals. is ready when you are. All right, the big guns come up for Boston. Rice, Yastrzemski, Fisk, and at the end of three full innings in New York, 6-2 Cleveland. And the Tribe is now batting in the fourth. Rice struck out his first time up. They're deep for Jim Ed and a little bit around toward left center. Rice, line drive, base hit, center field. First Red Sox hit is a screamer right over the head of Kirkwood. And on out into center. Well, the Red Sox get their first man on and Carl Yosemski up. Bounced out four to three his first time up. 
Mayberry takes the corner of the bag now against Rice. This place is just one continual din, one continual roar. Excitement running rampant at the old ball yard today. Kirkwood looks back. Here's the pitch to Yaz, and it's a little bit low for a ball. One and off. One ball, no strikes. Ball thrown out of play. Peter Thompson, telephone, back row. Sun has disappeared again. And more big, funny-looking clouds floating around overhead. Just sort of don't do anything more than that. Nothing, nothing. Last half of the fourth inning. 6-2 Cleveland, fourth inning in New York. Yaz lays off a high delivery. Two balls, no strikes. Two and zero on the captain with just to follow. <laughs> Gomez overshifts a little bit towards second. Not much. Kirkwood eyes Rice. Jim's not going any place, and a high delivery ball three. Count goes now to three and zero on Yastrzemski, and he takes the long hard look now at Coach Eddie Yost. Kirkwood mad at himself for that last pitch, shaking his head. Walked him. Ball four. The Red Sox have two on. The third walk given up by Kirkwood. And up comes the Blue Jay bullpen right now. Little Council of War. Howell and Saron and Kirkwood all get together out in front of the pitcher's mound. And Hartsfield ready to throw the book at the Red Sox today. Has pitchers warming right now. Here is Phipps. Struck out in the second inning. In the fourth inning at New York, Kuiper opened the inning by flying to center field, but Tom Verizer has just hit a single up the middle. So the Indians have another base runner with one out in the fourth. Rice off second. Yaz off first. Mayberry looking for the bunt. Swing and a foul right back here for a strike. Nothing in one. Tom Underwood and Tom Murphy. Double barreled action in the Blue Jay bullpen. Uh, Kirkwood wavers a bit here. Mayberry still thinks Fisk is going to bunt. He's still in on the grass. So is Howell. Nothing, nothing. Fourth inning. And the Red Sox for the threat riding. And with all of it in front of them out there on the scoreboard. The only game on the scoreboard today is that one. Cleveland, New York. Rice takes off. Here's a little shot out toward right field. Baylor coming on, coming on, makes the catch. Throw to second, double play. Rice took off and Fisk flies into a double play, nine to six. I think Rice is going to make it. Well, it's a funny kind of a game, my friends. Two outs. Yeah, still on at first, and the batter will be Fred Lynn, who flied to medium right field his first time up. You know, your family always deserves the best, and when it comes to hams, they deserve Colonial. They've been giving consistent quality for over 50 years, and that's why Colonial is the number one selling ham in all New England. Two outs, runner at first. And the crowd gets rather quiet after being all stirred up with the two-on-nobody-out situation. Lynn looks at a good pitch from Kirkwood for a strike. 0-1 the count. Rick Manning has just singled home another run. The Indians are leading 7-2. High to Lynn. One ball, one strike. The Indians are in some kind of hitting mood today. The hit and run single up the middle, and Verizon scored. And Torborg is letting it all hang out. 
One ball, one strike on Lynn. Kirkwood brings it in. Freddie bounces a foul over toward his own dugout. One and two on Lynn. And yet another exchange of baseballs here. Cleveland leads 7-2 and still batting in the fourth inning. Kirkwood brings it in. High, high pop-up in the infield and playable. Roy Howell looking up into the tough sky and he's got it. We go to the fifth, no score. Instead of merely shaving, begin with Canon Shave Soap. Load the thick Canon brush with hot water. Whisk it around the wooden bowl and work the billows of softening, soaking lather deep into your beard. The whiskers practically surrender before the blade touches them. Canon Shaving Soap with carved wooden bowl and brush. And the Canon Aftershave Balm. A way to shave and save your face at the same time. Canon, now available at all outlet department stores. Come on there, little fella. Start just one more time. We're on our way to the Bug House Fall Tune-Up Special. Just one turnover will do it. Might help you to know Bug House is offering 50% off all tune-up parts. That's right. And 20% off any parts for other needed repairs. Bug House at two locations, 295 Highland Avenue, Route 6 Seacock, and 1199 Jefferson Boulevard, Warwick. So what do you say? Oh, that a boy. The Bug House giving new life to VW since they invented the bug. Hey, Pops, can you take over a while? I'll be right back. You got to go now? Oh, yeah. I just got a terrific taste for a Baby Ruth candy bar. Now? You bet. That sweet chocolatey coating over chewy caramel, fudge, and peanut. But, Ned, what about the Red Sox? Oh, they love Baby Ruth candy bars, too. But you can't leave now. The game is so much better, Pops, when I've got a Baby Ruth bar. Be right back. Baby Ruth candy bars. When you've got to have one, you've got to have one. A 7 2 score has been posted. And this place is dreamland, baby. They're just cheering everything good that comes out in the way of news from New York. Fifth inning, no score here, and here's Ned. Otto Velez leading off. Left fielder, right handed batter. Louis has been awfully stingy. He has given up one hit. And that's all that Kirkwood has given up. It's outside to Velez, ball one. Tiant twirls. Strike called, curveball. I didn't do that yet. One ball, one strike. Now Tiant shows the numbers, and the change up is just a bit inside. Ball two. Two balls, one strike. Red Sox and Toronto, nothing, nothing in the fifth. And the Indians having their way with the Yankees, 7-2 to two in the fourth. Fly ball, sky high to right field. Jim Rice over toward the line, still coming in, and he puts it away for the out. We'll have a station break now on the Red Sox radio network. This is your station for entertainment, music, and information. Between the noise, the news, and the snooze, WJR Providence. Willie Upshaw, designated hitter, bounced to Tiant in the second inning. Fastball, and Willie took a big cut, a golf cut at that one, and missed it for strike one. Nothing in one. Tiant in one of the many games of his life. Delivers, strike swinging, and Upshaw went for one around his eyes. Nothing in two. Yanks are now batting in the fourth inning and trailing seven to two. There are two strike pitch to Upshaw. And there's a high foul ball, left side, over toward the stands. Brohammer over, can't get it. Nothing in two.
People here have exploded three or four times already, but mainly from the scoreboard. This game has been a tight one and a well-played one by both clubs, well-pitched by Tiant and Kirkwood. A double play and a force out from center field have hurt the Red Sox. Here's the pitch. Low, a ball. One ball, two strikes. Willie Upshaw with McKay to follow. Tiant delivers. And then another pop-up, this time in fair ground near third. Back for Brohammer and makes a fair ball catch. Four yards back of third base. There are two down. Brohammer has been busy so far in this game, down at third on ground balls and pop flies. Dave McKay is 0 for 1, grounded to Scott in the third. Switcher batting left against Tiant. Louie, both feet on the pitching rubber. He stands off on the first base side of the rubber instead of directly in the middle. Now, spins and throws, and McKay looks at a good curveball for a called strike. Nothing in one. Wind up by Tiant. Ground ball hit towards second. Jerry Remy up and over, and that's all. One, two, three again. And we go to the bottom of the fifth. Nothing, nothing. Your Chrysler Plymouth dealer announces Car Wars. A battle with the competition that's going to make you the winner. By zapping the competition with year-end values on the greatest lineup of cars we've ever offered. Like the new Chrysler LeBaron. The car that adds a little life to your style with every model. A sporty coupe that's got the competition running scared with options like soft leather seating and a T-bar roof. LeBaron Sedan, where prestige rests on great values, not a $12,000 price tag. And the new size town and country wagon, the comfort of a Chrysler, the work habits of a wagon. Yes, in the battle for your car dollar at cleanup time, nobody's got a lineup of winners like your Chrysler Plymouth dealer, who'll make you a winner too during Car Wars. See your New England Chrysler Plymouth dealers during Car Wars. Sports shorts with Jim Rice. Jimmy, from your point of view, what really makes a pitcher effective? To me, the best pitchers are the ones that have the variety of pitches because they really give hitters a lot to think about. Yep. Put it that way because it makes me think of the great variety of colonial bacon. Well, besides their famous special cut bacon, they also have maple bacon. Beef strips, a great beef blend, and smoky strips, a hearty combination of pork and bacon. And that, Jimmy, is enough variety to give even a heavy bacon hitter a lot to think about every morning. Not me. I just dig in at the plate and give them all my best shots. Bottom of the fifth inning, Red Sox and Blue Jays no score. And the lower third of the Blue Jay order up against Don Kirkwood, who has given up just one hit. A hard single by Jim Rice up the middle in the fourth inning. Hobson grounded out to third in the third inning. Kirkwood pitching in the lion's den. There's a base hit, center field. Hobson starts it with a single. Butch Hobson singling to center. And the boomer coming up. Second Red Sox hit. George Scott up. Nobody out. We'll see how what uh, Zimmer has him doing. In the Yankee fourth inning, Greg Nettles hit one that was taken at the wall. Shambliss walk. White has bunted safely. There's one out, and the Yankees have two men on base in the fourth inning as they threaten to come back. There's a called strike to the Boomer. They're looking for the bunt. Pirates got four runs in the fifth inning against Philadelphia. They lead four to two and Omar Marino stole his 71st base which is a pirate record. Pittsburgh pirate record. Max Carey was the old guy that had stolen a batch of them. 
Now the set and the pitch. And the bunt is toward first, but it's foul. And it's two strikes to Scott. They uh, completed a double play on the, on the Yankees, and it's the end of four innings, 7-2 to two Cleveland. So that threat went by. Hobson leads away from first base. George Scott is up. Here is the set. And the pitch. Ground ball to second. Off the legs of McKay. Bounces into center field. Hobson to third. Ball gets behind. And Hobson stays at third. They're throwing the ball all over the place. And an error on Dave McKay on a double play ball. Puts runners at first and third with nobody out. A perfect double play ball. Hit hard to the second baseman. And McKay just let it rattle around his heels and his shoes. It went on out into center field. And that was that. It hit off his left heel and bounced through his legs out into center. And now the Red Sox have runners at the corners. Nobody out. A blatant error by Dave McKay. Pretty good second baseman normally. Brohammer is up. The infield, a double play depth around second. Powell is on the edge of the grass at third. Red Sox with a legitimate threat here as Kirkwood gets things squared away about coverage and everything else with his catcher, Rick Cerrone. Here's the set. The pitch to Bro is a strike called on the outside corner. They are not playing in. They'll play at the double play depth and concede a run here if they can get two out. There was a chance for the a double play and two outs and nobody on. Check swing. It's inside. They check off with Maloney at third. He says, nope, it's a ball. One ball, one strike. One and one count. Brohammer the batter. Now the set by Kirkwood. Here's his pitch. Line drive down the right field line. Foul. Wickedly hit by Bro, but foul. One ball, two strikes. Burleson on deck. Cleveland now batting in the fifth inning and leading the Yankees 7-2. to two. The Yankees had a shot with two on and only one out, but a double play ball started by Bucky Dent. Took him out of the inning. Hit in two by Dent. The pitch is a ball. And the count is two and two. Well, at eight nothing that Alan Ashby put out there earlier for a joke isn't too far off right now. <laughs> Seven to two Cleveland. Now Kirkwood drops to the belt. Comes on with a pitch. And is hit on the ground a second. McKay has this, goes to second, one, back to first, not in time, one nothing, Red Sox. <laughs> Brohammer gets the run batted in as Hobson scores, and the Red Sox lead one to nothing. Ball was not hard hit, and that's what took the double play possibility off, because McKay had to wait on it. Now, one out. Brohammer at first, and Burleson is up. The Red Sox with a precious run here in the fifth. And that should have been the third out, the way you look at it, but you don't presuppose a double play yet, so we'll wait for time to tell. Okay, Burleson stands in. He's grounded out twice, once into a fielder's choice. No, actually he didn't. He didn't ground out. He got the, what appeared to be a base hit to center. There's a ball. And it was picked up by Bassetti, and he fired to third to put the force on George Scott. It turned out to be a force out on what ordinarily would have been a base hit. Indians are out in the fifth inning. Yankees at bat now in the fifth and trailing 7-2. to two.
Carlson bent over at the plate. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. Ball two. Make it two and oh. Two and nothing to Burleson. Remy on deck. Kirkwood fires. There goes Brohammer. Ground ball is short. The play will have to be at first base by Gomez. And they get Burleson. But Brohammer gets into scoring position. He was on the move and they had no play on him. Burleson grounds to short and with two out, Remy's up. Remy was out trying to bunt in the first. Had a fielder's choice in the third. one nothing Red Sox. Fifth inning. Toronto has scored just one run in this series so far. A home run by Roy Howell yesterday. It looked as though the Detroit Tigers never would score a run in the final game they played here. There's a drive deep to right field. Way back. Way back there. The bullpen is off the wall. Takes a hop. And it is a ground rule double. And Brohammer scores. 2-0 Boston. playing shallow in right field for Jerry Remy and he showed him that time as he belted it over Baylor's head it took one hop at the base of the wall and bounced in for a ground rule double John Bob Murphy John Tom Murphy up again along with Tom Underwood in the bullpen Murphy and Underwood right and left handers as they're getting to Kirkwood now 2-0 Boston RBI number 44 for Jerry Remy. With the first extra base hit of the game, Jim Rice is up now. He is one for two. Two nothing, Boston. Now the look down by Kirkwood. And the pitch. Check swing by Rice. It's low, ball one. Howling, caterwauling Fenway Park. On what is scheduled to be the last day of the season. But wait. The count is one ball, no strikes to Rice. Here comes. Foul ball back. One and one. Yankees out in the fifth inning. At the end of five, 7-2 Cleveland. They have got four more shots. And Rick Waits, as uh, Fred Kendall was telling me on the dugout show, he's got his good stuff. He's as good as anybody. On a good day, he can hammer them. And he could be tough. Well, he's been tough so far, giving up just two runs in the one inning and right off the bat. 1-1. Foul ball out of play. One and two to Rice. Johnny Bench has hit a grand slam for Cincinnati. His 23rd of the year against Atlanta. Sice is pitching for the Atlanta third inning now. Grand slam for Mr. Bench. All right, the set. The one and two pitch to Jim Rice. Sidearm pitch. Waved at strike three. He's out. Strikeout for under for uh, the pitcher, right-handed pitcher. But the Red Sox pick up two. And we go to the sixth inning, two to nothing, Boston. Why, 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 why
Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Introducing Everly's all-new disposal oil jug. If you change your own motor oil, they're definitely a change for the better. No more messing with the individual quart cans. Emily's new disposal oil jugs have all four quarts of the motor oil that's always better than it has to be. All in one handy container. And when it's empty, you can fill it back up with the motor oil you just drained. Safe, easy, and clean. So next time you make a change, pick up Emily's new disposal oil jugs and make a change for the better. Because it's better than it has to be. Pick up Emily Oil from Irving Levine, Danbury, Connecticut. And now we're approaching the sixth inning. The Red Sox have taken the lead here, two to nothing. The Yankees are trailing by five runs in their game with four innings to play. Rick Cerrone is up against Louis Tian. Pitch is dropped over, called strike. Cerrone struck out in the third. Louis is fanned too. He's not walked anybody. Now the master deals. Fastball outside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Now the 1-1 one, one delivery. Change up, and Cerrone had his eyes widened at that one, but he took it inside for a ball. Hitched around, looks as if, boy, I'd like to hit that, but he let it go, and it's ball two. Two balls, one strike. And Louie goes to work. Fastball outside, ball three, three and one. There have not been many base runners for Toronto. There has been one. Howell with a single in the fourth inning. Some good fielding plays behind Louie today, too. There's a ground ball taken by Louie at the mound. He throws the first for the out. Funny kind of hop, a big hopper, and Louie gauged it just right. And he throws Cerrone out. There's one away. Read about this epic in the Globe tomorrow. Everything about the Red Sox finish and what they hope to be the finish of the Yankees may be on Monday. Read it in the Globe. Call 929-2222 for home delivery. The Indians are out in the sixth inning. Yankees batting in the sixth. Leading se- uh, the Indians leading 7-2. to two. The pitch is inside to Gomez. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. One away. Red Sox leading 2 nothing. Tiant fires, and it's a little foul ball out of play. Watched by John Pesky. It is a custom perch leaning on the top step. One ball, one strike. And here it comes. Fastball hit to the right side. Remy to his left, bobbles the ball. Picks it up, throws, can't make a throw. And he makes an error. So there's a second Toronto base runner, and it's done on an error by the usually very responsible Jerry Remy. So each second baseman has had errors. He went wide to his left that time, but had the ball and just let it get away from him. One out, one on, and Bossetti up. Rick Bossetti has fly to center. A great catch by Lynn to open the ball game. And struck out in the fourth. Bassetti waving the bat back and forth as Tiant jiggles down to the belt line. Scott holds against the runner. Gomez at first. The throw goes over there. Tiant with a good right-hander's move to first base. Burleson and Remy, a double play depth around second. Pitching Louie and strike call flipping the outside corner. No balls, one strike. Top of the sixth, and the Red Sox lead Toronto two to nothing. Now Tiant ready. Pitches. Foul back. Bassetti going for that outside pitch again. And the count is 0-2. Outfield straight away on Bossetti. 
Louie really did the job on him up in Toronto. Struck him out three times. Last uh, Saturday. Okay, the set. Here it comes. Inside with an overhand fastball. Just missing. A ball. One ball, two strikes. The Yankees are out in the sixth inning. Cleveland 7, New York 2. The jiggle by Louie. Bassetti waiting for the pitch. Gomez at first base. Strike three called. And Bassetti flips the bat up in the air and strides away. There goes the helmet right to follow the bat. And uh, plate umpire McKeon is looking at him as his retreats to the dugout. Bassetti <laughs> really teed on that one. He uh, didn't say anything, just walked away and flipped the bat up and then the helmet. So he is called out on strikes, and that's number three for Tiant. Bob Baylor is up. Baylor has grounded out twice. Once trying to bunt. Bohammer made a good play on him in the fourth. Gomez uh, still at first base. The pitch is outside, a ball. One ball, no strikes. Louis comes on and is taken for a strike at the knees by Baylor. Boy, Louis is on today. He's got all nine cylinders working in all 133 pitches. One ball, one strike. Fouled off. Strike two. One and two. The way right where he wants to be. In the middle of everything before a big crowd at Fenway Park. And he having center stage. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Fouled again, just spoiled a little bit by Baylor. Got a piece of it. It's still one and two. A ball, two strikes, two outs, one on. Lights on, and it's gotten a lot darker here at Fenway Park. The pitch by Tiant hit on the ground towards second, covered by Burleson, goes to first with his throw, and that's it. We're through five and a half, two nothing, Boston. Kremski leading off against Toronto's Kirkwood. Yes, Fisk and Lynn. Boston leading two to nothing over Toronto. Cleveland leading seven to two over New York. Roy White has just robbed Buddy Bell of extra bases with a fine catch in the outfield down there. But the Yankees need more than fine catches right now. Here's a ball high to Yastrzemski.
One ball, no strikes. Here it is. Strike called. One ball, one strike. Guy at the plate. Carl Yastrzemski. Ground ball hit toward the middle. Backhanded by McKay. Almost hit him up. Throws low to first in time. Good pickup by Mayberry on a throw off balance by McKay who slipped. But stayed with it. One out and we'll have station identification on the Red Sox radio network. Push the button for music and personality. 920 Radio. Between the noise, the news, and the snooze. WJAR Providence. Back at Fenway and Pudge Fisk is up. Fisk has struck out and had a fly ball out to right field that resulted in a double play. Rice was doubled off second after the catch by Baylor. Sidearm pitch over, called strike. Red Sox have had three hits off Kirkwood. Biggest of which was a double by Remy over Baylor's head in right. One strike pitch, down low for a ball. One ball, one strike. Bill Lee is entertaining his flock out there as he is warming up in the bullpen. Here's the 1-1 delivery. Ground ball to third, sharply hit, picked up by Howell. Fires across to Mayberry, and Fisk is out. Fisk almost had his arm ripped off as he went past Mayberry. He is limping, and his arm went flipping by Mayberry's body. And right now, he is limping into the dugout. Ooh. Well, there are two away. Fred Lynn is up. And watch out. The ball is inside. Almost hit him. It goes back to the screen. Ball one. Red Sox two. Toronto nothing. Sixth inning. Now Lynn backs out before the pitch can be made. And it's no pitch by Kirkwood. Lynn had asked for time. About the time just before the windup began. So Kirkwood went through with it anyway. Count is one ball, no strikes. Here is the 1-0 pitch. It's the ball. Dave Rasich is now pitching for the Yankees. He's a guy they brought up a few weeks ago, and uh, he is in there now in a reverse mop-up role. The 2-0 delivery. Lynn takes low. Ball three. Three and nothing. Three balls, no strikes, two outs. Kirkwood ready. And he... Did he hit him or walk? I know he walked him. The ball got by the catcher and... You know, he was hit by a pitch or whether it was a walk. At any rate, Lynn is at first base. We'll call it ball four for now. Although Lynn is uh, holding his hand. I guess he was hit by it. Hit by pitch, Fred Lynn. Butch Hobson up. Hobson has grounded out and singled. Red Sox leading 2-0. Two outs and a runner at first base, Fred Lynn. Lynn is still working on a hitting streak, but more important, he's 0 for 2 now and has dropped below 300. As far as Lynn's personal statistics are concerned, there's a called strike. I'm quite sure it won't bother him, though, if he goes 0 for 4 and the Red Sox win it and force the game tomorrow with New York. Barring a huge uprising by the Yankees in the stadium in the last three innings. Lynn going. Pitch thrown out of second base. He is out. Putting the tag on him was Dave McKay on a fine throw by Cerrone. And we go to the seventh inning. Two to nothing, Boston. 
down by the old mill street. Right now, NAPA dealers, Bald Hill Auto Parts, 1100 Bald Hill Road, and Kingstown Auto Parts, 6802 Post Road, care about what you buy for your car. So, right now, you can buy a car owner's tool kit for only six ninety nine dollars each. The kit is comprised of one adjustable open end wrench, one tire gauge, one pair of pliers, one Phillips head screwdriver, and one flathead screwdriver. And these tools are packaged in a handy vinyl roll-up pouch for convenient, easy storage. Only six ninety nine dollars a kit from Bald Hill Auto Parts, Wallach, and Kingstown Auto Parts, Kingstown. NAPA dealer stores, where quality and expert service go into the car and truck parts they sell. If the Sox don't win it this year, someone's going to end up on the carpet. If he's lucky, it'll be one of the carpet giants. You see, the carpet giant offers the largest carpet selection at the lowest prices anywhere in the East. You choose from hundreds of full rolls, thousands of remnants, all colors, all styles, and all at prices you won't believe till you see them. And from now till the end of the season, the giant is offering a free scatter rug to all Red Sox rooters just for coming in. After all, you do deserve something for your patience. That's at the Carpet Giant, Route 6 and Seacock, across from the new Annan Hope. Hi, this is Judd Hurd with great news for anyone who's thinking about buying a new or used recreational vehicle. Because at our Valley location, we've just opened one of the most fabulous new RV centers in New England. With tremendous grand opening specials on our entire inventory of new and used recreational vehicles. You'll find names like Southwind, Jamboree, Rally, and Rockwood. Stop in this week and browse through your new home away from home at Judd Hurd's Valley RV Center on Route 146 Lincoln. You'll save on your new up, RV, and, uh, and that's the promise. In the seventh inning and one out, the race is still in there for New York, and the Indians threatening for more. They're warming up nobody, apparently saving Gossage and Lyle for tomorrow. Jim? Sounds like that's the strategy of Mr. Lemon, right here and now. Here we're in the seventh. As we head into the stretch innings of this one in Boston, hanging on 2 nothing behind El Ciante. Howl up. Roy is uh, one for two in the game. And he puts a long foul drive deep down the right field side, but out of play. One strike on Mr. Howell. Tian on a one-hitter. It was a clean single rammed into the left center field gap by this guy back in the fourth inning. The only base blow off the gallant right-hander this afternoon. Pitch is outside, one and one. The kid got out of it. The Indians did not score, and the Yankees are now batting in the seventh, 7-2 Cleveland. One ball, one strike. Powell up and Mayberry to follow. And be no mistakes in this one. Hard cut by Roy and a missed strike two. One and two the count. You can just see the grim determination of a Louis Tion out there. With the Cleveland score going for him. And the score here going for him. Two nothing. The veteran sends it in. Long drive center field. Off towards left center. Lynn on the run. On the run. He got it. Freddie ran at the wall, takes Roy Howell back in the corner by the flagpole. One man out. Lynn ran and ran and ran until he finally caught up with it. So there's one away in the Toronto 7th. John Mayberry up. He's nothing for two. He's grounded out and he's popped up. Two fine, fine catches by Fred Lynn in center field today. Playing Mayberry, well over in the left center is Jastrzemski. Soft pitch is rammed in the right. He waited on that one and cracks a base hit. Second hit off Louie. And again, the tying run comes to the plate for Toronto. Louie blew up that big pitch, and John's eyes lit up, and he just waited and slapped it very hard to right. Here's Otto Velez. Velez is grounded out and slide to right. Left field, Velez. One on, one out. Darker and darker as the afternoon wears along. But score-wise, the picture's still bright for Boston. Not holding to Mayberry, and the pitch is a little bit low to the last one ball and no strike. John, not much of a threat to run anyway, of course. Two runs down, and only that, he's got a bad wheel. One ball, no strikes. Louie wiggling and jiggling down to the waistline. And a hard swing and a foul right at the feet of Fudge Fisk. One ball, one strike. Crowd just ready to erupt on every strike, every out on behalf of the 
Toronto Blue Jays. Pat Kelly's hit another home run for Baltimore, second of the game and 11th of the year. And they have a 4-2 lead over the Tigers of Ralph Hawk, who is managing his final game for Jim Campbell today. Major, we wish you well. Fisk shaken up by the foul ball and times out while the plate umpire Jim McKean waits until Big Pudge tells him he's ready. Every inch of Fisk's body must be black and blue from the beating he has taken this year. All right, set to go. Fisk stays. One ball, one strike. May vary at first. One out. Louie being ever so deliberate. Comes with a pitch over the letters for strike two. One and two the count as Velaz takes the walk out of the batter's box. Yankee game is running about a half an inning ahead of this one. So we may know down there definitely before we finish here. Here's the pitch to Velaz. Quack down toward third. Brohammer is up. He goes to Remy. Force play there and a throw to first base, but no chance to get Velez. Brohammer to Remy. Five to four. Two men out. Still a runner remaining at first base. And Willie Upshaw on the batter. He has bounced to Louie and popped up. Willie Upshaw. Gaylord Perry is going for his 22nd win today. 21 and six. What a year he's had for the Padres. Sutton will be his pitching opponent, 15 and 11. Where does he pitch Sutton today? Well, the playoffs coming up with the Phillies. But maybe Mr. Lasorda has other things in mind. Two outs, runner at first. Scott still not holding to the runner, Velez. Upshaw takes a fastball right down the heart of the plate for a strike. 0 and 1 the count. One strike on Willie Upshaw. Toronto's had two hits. The Red Sox have had but three. A big error by Dave McKay opened the gates for the two runs in the fifth inning. Ball down low and away. One ball, one strike on the left hand hitter. And speaking of Mr. McKay, he's out on deck. Sounds about as quiet right now as they have been all day long. It's a wait now. Bouncing foul down the right field side. At the end of seven full innings in New York, Cleveland seven, the Yankees two. They are in the eighth, and the Yankees have six outs to a playoff game here tomorrow, 2.30. The Red Sox have got a little more than that before they handle the Blue Jays and get in it, although they lead 2-0. One ball, two strikes. Just inside, Louis thought he might get the call from McKean and broke a full step toward the dugout. Two balls, two strikes. This club has just been tremendous on this home stand doing everything they've had to do. Playing almost flawlessly a field. Key hits. Great pitching. Ground ball to the right side. Remy is up. He'll feed it on to Scott. That's it. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Two nothing Boston. Here's special shopping news from Zare. Starting Monday morning, every Zare store in Rhode Island and Massachusetts will begin their big dollar spree sale. Hundreds of special low prices all over the store. Dollar saving specials at Zare on fashion housewares, health and beauty aids, and everything you need to get your car in shape for the cold weather ahead. Yes, specials in every department, all at super low prices at the dollar spree sale at Zare. Watch for the colorful dollar spree circular page after page of terrific buys. A huge inventory of all the latest looks for you, your family, and your home at the dollar spree Free sale at there. See how far your dollar can go with the dollar spree sale at there. Famous there quality and value at super special dollar spree prices. Remember, you can charge everything. Don't miss the dollar spree sale starting Monday morning. A super dollar saving time. Take another look 
at Zare. Winterize your car now with Goodyear's Super Sale on Blackwall Suburbanite Snow Tires. On sale right now at Jennings Brothers Tire Center, Garden City, West Warwick, and Wakefield. Goodyear's Suburbanite Snow Tires, A7813, are only $22 each, $1.82 FET. Eliminate winter slowdowns due to weather. Goodyear's Blackwall Suburbanite Snow Tires. On sale now at Jennings Brothers Tire Center, Garden City, West Warwick, and Wakefield. Jennings Brothers Tire Center and Goodyear's Suburbanite Snow Tires. What a great combination. Bottom of the seven. Hobson comes back up again. He was up there when Lynn was cut down stealing on the close play at second base. Butch, one for two. He started the two-run rally in the fifth inning. And Scott hit the double play ball at McKay, and he booted it. Bohammer drove in a run, and then Remy blasted one over the head of Baylor for the second run. And that's the way it stands here. And Tiant with six outs to go. Hobson takes a ball inside of the letters. One ball and no strikes. Staccato applause all over Fenway now. Fly ball hit rather deep right center field, but Baylor goes back to measure it, and at the warning track, he has it. One out to Scott. Well, after a hard day on the job, and baby, this has been a hard one, just sit back, relax, and have some Budweiser. The perfect way to end the hectic day. You and the King of Beers. Scott takes a ball a little bit outside. Boomer is 0 for 1 today. Low again, ball two. Two balls, no strikes on the big man from Mississippi, George Scott. On the corner for a strike, two and one. George's big glove and bat made the presence felt in this last great surge for the Red Sox to try to do just what's developing. Take the Yankees into an all-vital playoff game, which would be the second in history at Fenway Park. Long drive, deep center field. Way back goes the center fielder, Bosetti, and he gets it at the wall. George hit it in the long part of the ballpark. Two men out. Two well-hit balls in this inning. And up comes Brohammer. If there is to be a playoff tomorrow, Red Sox fans have long memories. will hope it turns out far differently than 1948 when Lou Boudreau came in and destroyed Denny Gale House. Two outs, nobody on. Slight conference. Don't think Kirkwood has not pitched well today, too. Cleveland is out in the eighth inning. The Yankees are batting in the bottom of the eighth, trailing 7-2. Bullhammer looks at one upstairs for a ball, 1-0 oh the count. Two men out in the Red Sox seventh. Kirkwood rears back, fires, and Bohammer takes low inside ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Both bullpens well populated, and they've both been up, but the two starters have hung it out today. Three and oh on Bro. Another pitch way inside. Burleson do next. Kirkwood has walked three already. And right on the verge of number four here with Jack Brohammer. And he does walk him. Well, the Red Sox get a base runner. The top of the order comes up, Rick Burleson. Nothing for three on the day. <laughs> He's just been ending anything much in the way of base hits. Two for Toronto, three for Boston. And more stirring around now with the Jays out in the bullpen. Hold off the rain. They're looking, a few drops did fall. It's been looking like it's going to pour down here for about the last hour. Mayberry has the hold at Bohammer at first base. There's a drive by Burleson. Hit well back into left field, and it is gone. Home run, Burleson. Red Sox lead 4 nothing. The Rooster hits his fifth of the year, and this place is going absolutely start raving mad. <laughs> They're waiting.
waiting for a rooster in the dugout, baby. Everybody. Going to descend on him. Brohammer shaking his hands for nothing. And this all started with two men out on the walk to Brohammer. And Burleson just tied into the pitch. And the only question was, was it going to stay fair? And when the right hand of George Maloney went up, this place exploded. They want Burleson out of the dugout. And I think Zimmer's going to ask him to come out because they can't play. Yeah. Short wave of the hand. Very fast appearance for a rooster, I'll say that. All right, two outs. Jerry Remy up. He's had a big hit. And he takes the strike of the knees. Nothing in one. Crowd began to roar when the ball left Remy's bat. Or rather, Burleson's bat. Ground ball, right side, and through in the right field. Base hit. Jerry Remy gets his second hit. Now he's signed for two, and he's out. Well, a good play, nine to six. We go now to the eighth inning. It's four nothing, Boston. In the camera world, there's nothing fine. Dressing with taste, with style, with flair means careful attention right down to your shoes. And second to none in men's shoe designs is Nun Bush at Donnelly's. Handsome Nun Bush shoes fit right, wear right, look right. Whatever the occasion calls for, from fashionable slip-ons to ruggedly classic wingtips, Donnelly's can outfit your feet to complement the rest of you. Nun Bush shoes, none finer. Donnelly's, the store for the... I bought an economy car, gave up big car ride and room. I didn't give up. Bought a new Plymouth Volari four-door with big car ride, room for six, and compact economy. So why didn't he get a Volari? I give up. Although your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel, six-cylinder Volari four-door with manual transmission at 28 miles per gallon highway, 20 cities. Don't give up. Get a Volari. What do you like? Cheese. Yeah, yeah. That's what you get. Yeah. Yeah. Papa Gino's. We're going to Papa Gino's, right? Right. So we'll all have to get pizza, right? Wrong. Yeah. What you like is what you get. But what if I want a hamburger? That's, That's what, what you, you get. get. Or a hot dog and a Coke? That's, That's what, what you, you get. get. And what if I want a big hot pizza pie with green peppers and onions and sausage and mushrooms? That's what, what you get. get. What you like is what you get. <laughs> Fred Stanley let off the Yankee eighth inning with a base on balls. Nobody out. Sid Manji and Jim Kern are both warming up for Cleveland. Yankees batting in the eighth, trailing 7-2. All right, Mr. Martin, bring them home. All right, Mr. Woods, we'll see. 4-0, Boston. Two unearned, two very, very definitely earned runs. And the first pitch is inside to the first man up. Dave McKay standing in there in the top of the eighth inning. And Louie... Turning it on with two innings left. Now the pitch. Slow pitches outside, ball two. McKay, Cerrone, and Gomez up this inning. Rooster just got it in there, down the line. Two balls, no strikes to McKay. Siant fires, the fastball is over, called strike. Twenty-nine thousand two hundred one. Twenty-nine thousand two hundred one today to see this one. There's a foul back out of play. Two and two. Bill Crowley has just announced over the squawk back. It'll be Torres against Guidry tomorrow afternoon at 2.30. And that's the way everybody feels right now. Red Sox on top of what could be an explosive win here. Relying on the Cleveland Indians to hold a five-run lead. Ground ball right side. Remy over to his left has it and flips to Scott for the out. One down. Rick Cerrone up. He has struck out and bounced out. You might uh, put in your notebook that uh, maybe tomorrow morning you go over to Zare before you come to the ballpark. The Zare Dollar Spree sale starts Monday. Total attendance, 2,258,517 for the year. How about that, sports fans? 
Here's the pitch, and it's a fastball high, ball one to Gomez. Okay, it's all out in the eighth. Into the ninth inning, seven to two Cleveland. Curveball over, called strike. One ball, one strike. There's the pitch. It's high, a ball, two and one. That seven to two eighth inning score just went up, and everybody looking at the board knows there's just one to go down in the Bronx. The Bronx, the Red Yankees want to play anymore in the Bronx this year. They're going to have to beat the Red Sox tomorrow, probably. The pitch is outside a ball, three and one. Louis breezing now with a four-nothing lead. Tom Bergmeier getting some work in the bullpen for Boston, just in case. 3-1 pitch by Tiant. Strike call, 3-2. And, and Gomez started for first base. Takes a look around and says, What? Three balls, two strikes. Whoever wins here tomorrow flies out to Kansas City tomorrow night. The 3-2 pitch by Tiant. Foul back by Luis Gomez. Three balls, two strikes. One away. Larry McCall has now been called upon to pitch for the Yankees in the top of the ninth inning as they are saving the goose and the spark in case they're needed tomorrow to pick up Ron Guidry. Apparently the New Yorkers convinced that they're coming up here. Here is the 3-2 pitch by Tiant. Foul. Here it comes, fellas. Right. Wow. Into the booth, breaking things, and where did that go? <laughs> That's the first time we've had one in the booth roll up like that. Thanks a lot, Louie. Three balls, two strikes. Tiant ready. Pitch is popped up. Burleson looking skyward on the edge of the outfield grass. Takes it for the out. Two down. Station break time on the Red Sox radio network. Hear the Boston Red Sox every game, home and away, on your station for sports. 920 WJR Providence. Batting for Gomez. It was uh, Caron who just went out. We have a pinch hitter batting for Gomez. Theron has just popped up. Gomez will not bat. It'll be Sam Ewing, a left-handed hitter, to bat for Gomez. Ewing hitting 182. Tiant deals, and the change is inside. Ball one. One ball, no strikes. Fastball for a called strike. One ball, one strike, two out. Crowd is really rampant today. They're having a good time. Are they ever? Ground ball toward the middle and cut off by Burleson. Back of the bag. Throws him out. Good play by the Rooster. And we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Four nothing, Boston. Give me transmission problems, huh? <laughs> you lemon. Before you trade in your car for a more expensive model, come to Amco Transmission. We'll take you through our procedures step by step so you'll know the job we recommend is the right one. And the price we quote won't be an estimate. It'll be a firm price. And Amco will put you and your car back together again. Amco Transmissions, Fall River, Providence, Warwick. 
If you were to follow the best equipped, sharpest, most comfortable looking, and most happily driven recreational vehicles, campers and trailers with New England plates, well, chances are good they'd lead you to New England's largest RV dealer, Ware Trailer Sales. But there's no need to follow the best when you can buy the best from the largest. Ware Trailer Sales, Route 6, Johnston, Rhode Island, and Route 44 in Raynham, Massachusetts. The Ware way to RV. Everyone's following Ware's example. Colonial Sports Shorts with Jim Rice. Jimmy, it's a great feeling to be selected to play in an all-star game, isn't it? They say some guys don't get excited, but I still do. It's always been exciting to be part of the best airs in any business. Sort of like working with Colonial, huh, Jimmy? You know, they've got quite an all-star group themselves with special cut bacon, New England's number one selling ham, and my favorite, Fenway Franks. That's what I said. I like working with the best. And in New England, the best is Colonial. Jimmy, you're beginning to sound like an announcer. Pop, you're beginning to sound like Jack Satter. <laughs> The Indians have added another run in the ninth inning. A Wayne Cage has just had a ground rule double to make it 8-2. to two. Jim Rice coming to the plate right now. Rice is one for three. He has singled and struck out twice. They've got another one now. Cage has scored, and it's Cleveland 9, the Yankees 2. Light rain coming down at Fenway Park now. Rice swings through and misses strike one. Nothing in one. Here's the one strike pitch. Good curve ball, but low. One ball, one strike. Kirk Wood still in there has pitched a creditable ball game, has given up just five hits. A two run homer by Burley, a big one. A run producing double by his buddy Remy. There's a high drive to left field. Let's see if that makes it. Way up in the air and coming down into the screen. Home run, Jim Rice, number 46. Jimmy Rice with a towering home run into the left field screen off one of the standards, picking up his 46th home run. And the Red Sox lead 5 to nothing. This place is going 8 right now. They don't care about the rain, any kind of weather right now. Their Red Sox lead 5 to nothing. There's a curtain call by Rice. Is that what they wanted? Came out and tried high, just as Burleson did an inning ago. So now it is five to nothing. They have already put on the scoreboard. Pitchers tomorrow, Torres, 16 and 12. Gidry, 24 and 3. The pitch is high to Yastrzemski. And you can imagine the feelings of the man at the plate right now. It's looking gaunt and grim the last few days, wondering if he could go on and keep winning and still lose. Now a chance to win. There's a foul ball out of play as the rain is pouring down now. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. A teeming rain over Fenway Park at this point. It had been predicted. But let's see. Joe Mooney and his group will have a job to do tonight and tomorrow. The changeup fades outside. Ball two. Nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the Red Sox leading 5-0. And on this day, at least, baseball has taken over for football. Pitch is inside, almost hitting Yastrzemski. Three balls, one strike. It is three and one to the captain. Rain coming down. It's steady, but it's not a pelting torrent right now. It's dark at Fenway. But the hearts are bright and gay. It's a strike called. Three and two to Yastrzemski. Cleveland just mopping up New York right now. Nine to two in the ninth inning.
Now the 3-2 pitch to Yastrzemski is popped up. Right side foul ground taken there by Mayberry. Going toward the dugout. And Yastrzemski is out. There's one away. Carlton Fisk is up. Rain has tapered off a little bit now. Pudge Fisk is up. He is 0 for 3. There have been six Red Sox hits, but they've been good for five runs. Two of the runs unearned. Kirkwood delivers, and it's way outside a ball. They're going into the bottom of the ninth now. The Yankees batting and trailing 9 to 2. Three outs to go to make it certain. And three outs to go here to make it certain after the Red Sox bat in the eighth. The pitch is followed through by Kirkwood. They call it no pitch, though, and that's the second time it's happened to Kirkwood, and he doesn't like it. This could ask for time and backed out. Jim Rice now has nine home runs and 24 runs batted in in his last 28 games. Now the 1-0 delivery. Fisk looks low. Goes to the screen. Ball two. The Pirates beat Philadelphia 5-3. to three. The Phils put a lot of pitchers named Joe in there. Guys I never even knew they had. Pena and Bernardo or something like that. Ball two. <laughs> it's all there. But the Pirates beat them. There's a strike called on Fisk. 5-7-0 and oh for Pittsburgh. 3-9-0 and oh for Philadelphia. Jones the winner and Saucier the loser. Colby got a save and Marino set a pirate base stealing record with 71 on the year. Count is two and two to fifth now. And uh, Tacolby's 31 saves set a pirate record today too. Kent Tacolby. 30,224 on that big final day in Pittsburgh when they give everything away except Bob Prince. Foul back. Two and two. Pirates uh, fans must be drained as they are in Philadelphia. Four cities. Right down to the final weekend. One out in the Yankee ninth. Jackson is lined out. The 2-2 pitch to Fisk. Watch out. He is down. He goes. The ball is behind him. And he just avoided getting hit. Looks as if that was no way it could miss him, but somehow it did. It is three and two now. Greg Nettles has hit a one-out double to left field. One out, one on in the Yankee ninth, and they trail by only seven runs. Nine to two. Rain is starting up a little bit heavier now. Alternately light and dark at Fenway Park. 3-2 pitch to Fisk. High fly ball, left field. Going back for it is Velez, and he's there. He's got it. Midpoint of the scoreboard. Two outs in the Red Sox eight. Tim Johnson is playing shortstop for Toronto. Okay, coming on for Gomez, who is hit for it. All right, Fred Lynn with a chance to get a base hit and come near the 300 mark. Right now he is at 299, and a base hit here probably could put him at 300. Wind up by Kirkwood. High, ball one. Lynn, in this one, has flied out, popped up, and been hit by a pitch. Kirkwood winds and pitches. Lynn belts a foul back. One ball, one strike to Fred. He's played a fine ball game defensively today. Made two great catches in center field. One in and one out. One ball, one strike. Two away. Here it comes. Ground ball to first. Picked up by Mayberry. Underhands it in time to Kirkwood, and Lynn is out. Retiring the side, we go to the ninth inning. Five nothing, Boston. Hey, the sun's gonna shine all day. Don't run too fast. You can come in fast. Cause the sun's gonna shine all day. Hey, sun's gonna shine all day. Up in the 
in the mountains in a place almost nobody knows, way in the wilderness, there's a little mountain spring. And even on a really hot day, 90 degrees in the shade, dusty dry, this little spring just keeps bubbling up ice water. Cool and deep and clear. But we just wanted you to know in that little mountain spring, there are two bottles of ice cold Coca-Cola. So frosty cold, they're almost frozen. They're waiting for you there in that bubbling ice water. If you're looking for a little life today, you know where to find it. Ice cold Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola and... Sydney Supply has an interesting word to try out on your friends. It's Hydronics. That's the name for the quietest, steadiest, most efficient home heating system ever developed. Heating by hot water. Enjoy this better kind of heating in your home this winter. Hydronic hot water heating is clean heat. Smooth, steady heat that automatically adjusts to changing outdoor temperatures. And the quality name in Hydronics is Wheel McLean, America's leading producer of heating equipment. Hydronic hot water heating by Wheel McLean Heating Equipment at Sydney Supply, 176 Union Avenue, Providence. The big roar at Fenway Park as the final score flashes on the board in center field. Cleveland 9, New York 2. A tremendous roar as Louis Tiant, three outs away from a shutout and assuring a playoff tomorrow. Pitches outside to the first batter, Rick Bassetti. Ball one. Cleveland trampling the Yankees today, 9-2. to two. Rick Waite, besting Catfish Hunter. And Freddie Kendall was right. Waite had it today. Here is the 1-0 delivery to Bassetti. Strike called, and he is arguing right now with plate umpire McKean. He stood there. He didn't, he was not going to offer it that in the first place. But said he was the guy who flipped his bat in his helmet the last time he was called out on strike. And here comes Roy Hartsfield to get between his player and the umpire, saying, why now? The study is hot under the collar and has let McKeon know so, but the cooler head of his manager prevails. And Hartsfield says, let's go on, let's get in there and play ball. The Louis chant starts in the grandstand for good here and all over the ballpark as the veteran of so many big ball games is pitching another one right now. There's a curve outside and low, ball two. The Red Sox have a 5 nothing lead. <laughs> Cleveland has beaten New York. Three more outs and we play here tomorrow. Swinging strike two. Two and two to Bassetti. Umbrellas up down in the crowd along the grandstand. And the bleacher folks, they don't care. They're just there with the rain. An ecstatic crowd bellowing all afternoon as the Cleveland runs kept piling up and the Red Sox runs started to here. Check swing on a curve. It's outside. Ball three. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes. The windup, the pitch. Fly ball, right center field. Going for it, Jim Wright calls for it. He's got it. One out. One away to Bob Baylor, who has grounded out three times. Deont gets a baseball back from Carlton Fisk. The boys from Boston will play again. The wind up by Deont. The pitch. Strike called outside corner. Nothing in one. Deont spills a curve ball outside for a ball. The count is one ball, one strike.
Louis is just a couple of outs away from his fifth shutout of the year. He leads the Red Sox in shutout. Here's a ball fouled back by Baylor. One ball, two strikes. One and two with one away. And now the one-two pitch. Here's the head fake and the ground foul back as Louie gave it the whole book that time. And the head looks back toward the flagpole. The count is one and two to Baylor. Very few pitchers in the American League who can finish a game better than Tian. Now the one-two offering. Inside ball two, a fastball overhand. One, two, and two. Two balls, two strikes. Baylor still hanging in there with an open stance from the right side. Sprinkling of rain coming down at Fenway. And Gian throws. There's a drive toward left field, but it's hooking into the crowd. Foul. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Two and two. The delivery is fouled off. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Louis Tion all set. Comes on with his pitch and it's swung on and missed strike three. He gave it to him again. And that is four strikeouts for Louis. And he's starting to fall around the mound. The people are beginning to get up. The batter is Roy Howell talking to Carlton Fisk. Now, I hope they leave some of the park to play in <laughs> this thing in. Yeah, we got to play here tomorrow, so y'all don't come out and wreck it here. Here's the pitch. Check swing. It's inside ball one. The game has to be played at Fenway Park tomorrow, so we would entreat those who would like to do so please keep the field in playable condition. There's a change-up inside a ball. For those stations on the network, the closed-circuit announcements will be on at 12.45 p.m. tomorrow. Dugout interview will be on at 2.12. Game at 2.30. The strike is called, and the count is two balls, one strike. Closed-circuit announcements for the network stations on at 12.45 tomorrow. Dugout show will be at 2.12. Here is the 2-1 pitch by Louie. It's a strike two call, a fastball. And now it's one strike away from more pandemonium on the field. What do you think it would be if they beat the Yankees tomorrow here? They're up and they're cheering Louis Tiot. He's in the middle of things and he winds up right now. Here it comes. High pop-up. Third base side. Bro Hammer in foul ground. Under it. Bro Hammer has it. Ball game's over. We play the Yankees tomorrow. The Red Sox ecstatic on the field. Running toward the dugout as Jack Brohammer with a ball in his hand, carrying it like a halfback, goes into the dugout. They've taken the hat away from Don Zimmer. The bullpen has come in, and the jubilant, jubilant Red Sox ball club coming in from the dugout. They have armed police out here. They don't want anybody on the field. They are playing, telling people, please stay off it. They've got to use the field to play tomorrow. So the Red Sox quickly make their way to the dugout. Louis Tiant comes on with his fifth shutout of the year and blows them down in the ninth inning. Toronto nothing. Final score, Red Sox five, Toronto nothing. We'll wrap it up in a moment.
All kinds of people. Like you and me. That's right. All kinds of people. That's what credit unions are all about. And the 103 credit unions in Rhode Island. And all kinds of people. Are proud to be a part of bringing you the excitement of Red Sox baseball. After all, it's a community service. Just like the way the folks at your credit union do business. They offer low interest loans. High savings dividends. And some of the most responsive financial services that you'll find in Rhode Island. Join today where you work or live and discover credit unions. It's all kinds of people. Doing more for you. Right now is the time to buy and save, and Outlet Tire Centers is the place to go. For a limited time only, Outlet Tire Centers are offering their famous Golden Falcon polyester cord tires at a money-saving $22.50 plus federal tax. Available in most medium or large sizes. Free tire mounting and tire rotation included. Be smart. Keep your car performing beautifully with these high-quality, low-priced Golden Falcon tires. Buy now and save at Outlet Tire Centers. Conveniently located in Garden City and 580 Pawtucket Avenue at the Providence City Line. You've seen Emily's all-new disposal oil jugs. If you change your own motor oil, they're definitely a change for the better. No more messing with the individual quart cans. Emily's new disposal oil jugs have all four quarts of the motor oil. It's always better than it has to be. All in one handy container. And when it's empty, you can fill it back up with the motor oil you just drained. Safe, easy, and clean. So next time you make a change, pick up Emily's new disposal oil jugs and make a change for the better. Because it's better than it has to be. Pick up Emily Oil from Al Len Automotive Supply, West Roxbury, Massachusetts. Here are the totals of today's game. The Red Sox, five runs, six hits, one error. They left five. The Toronto Blue Jays, no runs, two hits, one error. They left three. The winner, Louis Tiant, 13 and eight. His 12th complete game and his fifth shutout of the year. His 48th career shutout, 26 of them have been with the Red Sox. The losing pitcher, Don Kirkwood, he is four and five. Home runs by Rick Burleson, his fifth. By Jim Rice, his 46th. More in a moment. Your father and I have been on this If the car, truck, or van you're driving now has got what it takes to get you through the winter ahead, you should get what it takes to protect your vehicle from the miles of damaging slush and road salt to come. Tough Coat Dynol Automotive Rust Proofing in Pawtucket is bigger and better than ever. In its new location, 36 Newport Avenue, Pawtucket, the famous penetrance sealer two-step system comes with two to five-year guarantees. Find out more. Call 726-1950. And every time you start your car this winter, you'll know you stopped rust for good with Tough Coat. When I traded my old wagon for an economy one, my friend said I'd give up ride, room, comfort. But with this Plymouth Malari wagon, I got big car ride, room for six, and comfort. I just gave up a lot of stops for gas. While your mileage may vary, the EPA rates a one-barrel six-cylinder Malari wagon with manual transmission at 25 miles per gallon highway, 18 city. Don't give up, get a Malari. See Paul Bailey, Motor Sales and Lamb Motor Company. ...are on the same team. You've heard of the famous trio of baseball brothers, Joe, Dom, and Vince DiMaggio. But how many other baseball brothers can you name? How about Felipe, Matty, and Hazu Alou? And Cleet, Cloyd, and Ken Boyer? And Tony and Billy C? And Phil and Joe, the Necro brothers? Yes, there were a lot of family members who played in the big leagues. And speaking of families, how about your family? And shopping for bargains for the whole family. There has a winning lineup of low prices on everything you're looking for. Fashion, household goods, sporting goods, automotive, and toys. And you can charge it off. So save money for your family. Shop at there, where quality and savings are on the same team. The game was Louis Tion. It was Jim Rice's. It was Rick Burleson's and Fred Lynn's. It was everybody's. And uh, the crowd out here is just not going to go home for a while. They've got the mounted police out here to make sure nobody tears up the place. But nobody is going to. They know that through a September of frustration has suddenly bloomed into this big October 1st delight. And the Yankees come in with their best. Ron Guidry, which as it should be, going against the Red Sox tomorrow afternoon at 2.30. And they'll be selling tickets here right after the game today, as they did yesterday, until they're all gone. They posted the score again on the Cleveland Yankee game on the big board, 9-2 to Cleveland, and they put it up there in light. Thank you, Rick Waite. And I guess... Uh, 
A lot of his former teammates who are with this ball club now, Dennis Eckersley, Fred Kendall, Jack Brohammer, all thank Rick Waits very much. The Red Sox have brought it to a playoff situation. And right now, as we look down on this field, Johnny Pesky and Jim Rice are going out to go under the stands in center field. And Anderson, South Carolina, wants himself another little bit of batting practice for tomorrow. It all boils down to October 2nd against the Yankees and Ron Guidry. 2.30 game time, remember. The network stations will be... The closed circuit for the network stations will be on at 12.45. Dugout interviews will be on at 12, 2.12, and we'll go on from there. And the Don Zimmer show just before the dugout show. Whatever happens, anyway, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. That's one thing sure. Ned Martin here with Jim Woods. Our engineer, Ed Hetstrom. We'll be back with Jim in just a moment. The final score, Boston 5, Toronto nothing.